Oh, you got away this weekend? That's so nice. Oh, I love it there. Oh, that's so nice. Oh, that's so nice. Yes, being a couple and getting away for a long weekend is so nice, so romantic, so amazing. Being a gay couple and getting away for a long weekend, especially in a small town, is hard. It's harder than you could imagine. Let me hey friends, I'm Joel Karlovsky, the super brave teacher, the super brave gay teacher. Are you listening, YouTube? And today I'm talking about why getting away with my husband is hard sometimes. Really hard. I feel like I always had to put a prologue to all of these videos. I am not here to give my opinion of all gay relationships, all LGBTQ plus relationships, all getaways for gay people, all... I'm just talking about my experience, our experience, and it is just my point of view. And my point of view is valid because it is my point of view. Case closed. Joel, get off your high horse. Okay. Okay, Joel. Get Buy horse. Get off your high horse. Okay. Woo! So let me give you some context. This summer, me and my husband, we've had three little mini vacations. One, we did a staycation. The other one, we went up north. And the other one, we just did pretty local. And we went to a little small town. And it was awesome. It was awesome in the sense that, like any vacation, we needed it. We started on Friday, and we were just cranky with each other. And ugh, we just knew we had to hit the road and just start relaxing. So we get on the road and we head to this small town and people are right, it is beautiful. There are so many beautiful things to do, except, except. Three reasons why it's not so easy to be a gay couple in a small town. You mm. always have to be wondering what's okay. What's an okay thing to do? You see all these straight couples holding hands and making out everywhere, but if I touch my husband's hand, then ooh, don't do that. Don't ruffle any feathers. Ugh, it's exhausting. It's exhausting. So you end up feeling like this like kid sneaking around like, okay, we're in an alley. Maybe we can hold hands here. It's exhausting. Number two, the look, especially the silent look, the silent up-down. Now, you might have been thinking in the first example, Oh, that's kind of in your head. Yeah, you see a lot of straight couples holding hands, but you can hold hands. That's just your mindset. Just shift your mindset. Okay, I'll think about that. But I want you to think about this one, which is the silent up-down. Whether I'm walking by myself or with my husband, people will be talking and then they will see us and stop talking until we pass by them and then they talk again. This happened over six times in two days where they specifically were talking in a group of people. I walk in a room and everyone stops talking until I leave the room. Imagine how that feels. Now the first time you might be thinking, hmm, hmm. Second time, third time, fourth time, fifth time, six times. It's exhausting and it's hard. And number three, not seeing any other gay couples around us, not seeing any other lesbian couples around us, not seeing any minority couples around us. That was tricky and that was tough because you do feel alone because you are alone. You are the minority. And I remember sharing stories like this with my therapist and she would always be like, yep, mm-hmm, I hear that. And then I would always like come back at her with this Joel Fire new, like, we need to show them that we are worthy of their love. We need to show them that we are the same and equal and all these things. And she would always pause and she would say, and Joel, you need to be safe and you need to take care of yourself. So, I guess I'm sharing this video because I'm in the middle. I'm really trying to be this bold, super brave teacher, advocate for all people, and I'm still struggling with knowing how to balance my own fears and, and to be honest, exhaustion at times of, do I really want to show people that I'm a person worthy of their respect and admiration? And it's that, that continual balance between the so two. I guess that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna keep living the struggle and I'm gonna keep doing what my tattoo says, which is drop the rope. 
I don't need to be right on this situation. I'm just gonna drop the rope. I don't need to prove my case in this situation. I'm just gonna drop the rope. I don't have to show that I'm a worthy couple who's worthy of love, even in a small town in Minnesota. I'm just gonna drop the rope. And I encourage you to do the same. What are you holding on to right now? Drop the rope. It's not, it's not worth the headache. It is worth the dialogue. And I would love for you to leave some comments below on what happens to you when you go to a small town. Is, is this experience the same for you? Is it hard for you to, to even be stopping at gas stations along the way because once again, you're just getting that up down of like, you're not from here and it is quite obvious that you're not from here. I know that, obviously I know that. What, what experiences do you have? Leave a comment below, like this video, share this video, keep sharing stories. This is why this channel exists, to share our stories, to question things, to get excited about things, to drop the rope, to be here for each other. I am here for you. I see you, I appreciate you, I respect you, I support you, just because you are you, nothing else. Have a great day, friends. Bye! And I can also hold both about that town. Many people love this town. It is a beautiful, 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 picturesque, postcard-worthy town. And it's also hard for people like me, people like us, to visit. And that's okay, I can hold both. And I encourage you to hold both too. No one is bashing this town. I'm just validating my experience. Well, you can tell everybody, yeah, you can tell everybody.